नमस्ते आई एम श्वेता श्वेता बी पाटिल फ्रॉम दिल्ली इंडिया फर्स्टली आई विल वेलकम यू ऑल हु आर जॉइनिंग मी हियर टुडे फॉर टुडे फॉर माई वर्कशॉप ऑन इंडियन क्लासिकल वोकल्स एंड ऑल्सो माई हार्टीज थैंकिंग्स टू द इंटायर टीम ऑफ स्टेबी ऑन बॉर्डर्स for inviting me to conduct this workshop for uh, people across the world virtually um also this uh, page is uh, uh, doing really great that uh, they are organizing volunteers uh, to travel uh, like they are actually organizing a travel project uh, by sitting in their house and also they are providing interns um uh, for uh, you know the, the for the ab abroad programmers across the globe and um, i think uh, which has provided a, a strong cultural understanding of indian culture um uh, and um uh, uh, due to this uh, pandemic this lockdown a lot of people have delayed their travel plans uh, but why to delay uh, like the cultural learning and um, your you know travel plans you have delayed uh, due to this lockdown this, um, so uh, we have come up with uh, the series of workshop with this page uh, where uh, there's a great opportunity to connect and to know a lot so um, i'll be dedic dedicating my workshop today on uh, indian classical vocal forms through this session i would uh, try to acquaint you with uh, some indian philosophies and culture i will make uh, like i'll try to make you understand to certain extent to appreciate the beauty and the aesthetics of uh, indian classical music form um, which is called like indian classical music which is uh, called as bhartiya shastriya sangeet in hindi um, so melody lies in all forms of music universal it is uh, universal so um, i i would um, give you with an example uh, first one um ting 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 so uh, this sounds very much like um, chinese and uh, next uh, i hope uh, my tanpura is audible Carnatic music, and then I would try doing Western. So uh, now that um, uh, like you experienced four different musical forms, so um, you might wonder if uh, in anything is common between all these four pieces, then. If you uh, listen to all the four pieces carefully, then you will realize uh, that uh, the tune for all the four pieces is exactly the same. Then what is the difference? It is the way in which the tune was interpreted. You know, by the different cultures. Uh, so this is the reason why we got four different musical experience. Indian classical music uh, is divided into two types. that is hindustani classical music and uh, carnatic classical music so uh, both these uh, gives um uh, as uh, uh, different uh, their own they have their own uh, flavor according to the distinct types of uh, uh, interpreted music um, both are actually indian music so but still uh, they give a little different flavor right so when i speak about um, shastriya sangeet you might be very well aware of uh, bollywood and indie pop music 
राइट बट आर म्यूजिक शास्त्रीय संगीत is about a uh, spiritual and you know con- contemplative essence of the uh, indian culture it is not about entertain entertainment right so <clears throat> um uh, with this uh, form of music bhartiya shastriya sangeet uh, it very well represents the art form of uh, india so i would uh, try to draw parallel lines between the music that you are acquainted to and uh, uh, with that of uh, bharatiya shastriya sangeet so bharatiya shastriya sangeet is indian classical music um then uh, um we'll uh, be talking about uh, notes well uh, universally music has two main aspects um so first is melody and tune and second is rhythm or beat okay so uh, what are musical notes called in bhartiya shastriya sangeet they are called shruti or swara uh, swar okay so we have 12 shrutis so we have 12 notes notes is shruti i'll be using word shruti uh, for notes okay so uh, we have 12 shrutis or we can say um, we have 12 musical notes first is sa sa okay so this sa is a king note and uh, it is very important note as all other notes are placed depending upon this note also it comes in the end as the eighth swara or the note in order to give closure to the sargam and what is sargam sargam is sa re ga ma pa sa sa ri ga ma pa dha ni sa so this sa is giving a closure to the entire the sargam right so um indian classical music uh, is all about celebrating and you know exploring and um, setting per- permutation and combination of swaras uh, within a set of rules of the composition and uh, it is expected to perform on the spot also um um the performers should have a, a, a very thorough knowledge of both theoretical and uh, practical uh, knowledge either it can be a vocalist or any instrumentalist or a percussionist so uh, uh, you can imagine uh, the uh, level of mastery and practice and knowledge one should have over swaras right um so this is one of the reason why there's um, the glory in the names of uh, indian um, performers so now i would uh, be telling you about octaves so this all i'm telling you is under the first aspect that is tune and melody that i told you there are two aspects of music one is tune and melody and second is rhythm and beat so this is uh, uh, all what i'm telling you now is about notes and now i will be telling you about this Uh, okay all right so um you might come up asking if there are only 12 notes then why do we have harmonium and uh, piano have uh, more than 12 keys on them so let me introduce uh, to the melodic concept uh, which is a concept of octaves uh, which is known as saptak in uh, bhartiya shastriya sangeet so the tonics were sa is the root of indian classical music and as discussed early, earlier the position of all other notes are based on the position of uh, um, sa right um, the, which is very important a king note so the frequency of sa when the frequency of sa, sa is doubled right we get the upper sa which we say in our terms is tar sa sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa so this sa is sa is doubled we get what the upper sa all right so uh, in western terms if we see uh, right uh, octave is only saptak in um, in bharatiya shastriya sangeet so why it is saptak saptak means seven all right 
and when it comes to uh, octave so uh, octave means what octa means eight as it consists of eighth note uh, or the um, upper sa um, as the um, frequency of the same uh, you know middle octave but in our uh, hindustani shastriya sangeet we don't consider the eighth note note to be um, like within the the one saptak okay so uh, uh so okay yeah i'm telling you about the frequency ha huh. um and also uh, there is a tar saptak or a higher frequency um uh, note sa um, what i'm telling you yeah ha huh. the frequency when it is doubled from the middle octave it becomes tar and when uh, or the higher octave when it comes to a lower octave or uh, the bass octave we say and in uh, bharatiya shastriya sangeet it is known as uh, mandra sapta okay so it is the half the frequency of middle octave okay so i'll show you it in uh, harmonium so you can understand it in a better way tell me if my oops if my um harmonium is audible showing you a middle octave okay this is a middle octave and i'll now i'll be showing you the bass octave that is mandra sapta okay and now i'll be showing you the higher sapta uh, higher octave so uh, i guess there's one more question uh, that might arise that is if we have 12 notes where are they like there are only seven notes sari gama pa da ni so we uh, we do have komal note and as well as one tivra note okay so uh, including them uh, it is a little deep we might discuss it later but uh, just to have you know um, over knowledge about what sh- uh, notes are uh, what shruti is so there are 12 uh, notes out of which seven notes are main okay um, then um, males have um, generally males have uh, kali ek or kali do as their their pitch uh, it means first black and second black and for females it is fourth black or fifth black which is kali char and kali panch in uh, uh, in hindi so in indian classical music a person can choose their scale according uh, to their comfort of pitch uh, <clears throat> uh madhya saptak like the middle octave is a range of a person where he or she can sing with an ease okay and uh, which can be uh, compared to the middle register or or which is full throated when we sing middle octave it is full throated and the way the vibration you can feel it uh, in your throat okay uh, and then while uh, the bass octave can be um, compared to the chest uh, chest area where uh, you can feel it from chest and you sing from uh, your chest energy Uh, and then uh, we have a higher octave uh, uh, whose uh, like the vibration you can feel uh, it in the cheek area of the head okay so i guess there is a question <laughs> okay so um, now i will tell you about sound in bhartiya shastriya sangeet so sound is known as um, nad in sangeet in music sangeet is music so uh, music is art as well as science uh, you know which uh, like we express us uh, express it through our auditory medium so it is science because it is made up of sound and uh, sound is a part of physics which is universally applicable and it is art because uh, 
it is the interpretation of different cultures of different regions in different forms of musical ways so i, I will tell you uh, sanskrit is a uh, sorry uh, sangeet is a sanskrit word uh, which is uh, uh, the amalgamation of two words one is um, sam and uh, next is sam plus geet so sam means sang sang means a cluster and geet means poetry lyrics or the, any composition uh, majorly it is a, a lyrics so um, the meaning is sam adhik geetam Uh, along with the poetry or along with the composition uh, or along with the lyrics you can say so uh, we have uh, two types of uh, nad two types of sounds one is ahat nad ahat nad and second is anahat nad ahat nad um, is a sound that is produced by the collision of two or even more bodies and which can be you know perceived by a human ear uh, with any medium like air water any medium okay but there is second uh, type of sound which is anahat anahat so this is a sound which is unstruck and uh, which cannot be perceived by ears it is a uh, it's a metaphysical spiritual and a divine sound which can be attained by you know deep meditations um so this is the very reason why bhartiya shastriya sangeet is spiritual rather than any entertainment oriented in nature so uh, let us understand a few properties about uh, physical sound which is ahat nad uh, to like which will help you further to distinguish between a musical and a non musical sound so we do have um, in anahat nad we have to further categories which is a uh, musical sound and non musical sound well it depends on uh, person to person uh, that um, uh, maybe that sound is not musical for me it might be for you but uh, still in uh, bhartiya shastriya sangeet there are three properties that we consider to be uh, uh, ahat nad uh, you know a uh, uh, the physical sound okay on the basis of these three properties that i'll be telling you first is pitch okay uh, first is pitch which is like high or low uh, and then second we have amplitude or the volume uh, like pitch is measured in hertz while uh, amplitude and volume is um, um is the volume whether it is uh, loud or it uh, it is it is not loud then uh, the third uh, property is um, is the uh, tune or the timbre we can say you know we get to know uh, that there is a flute being played or a sitar being played or uh, uh, that person is speaking uh, it is because of uh, the you know um, the qualitative nature which distinguishes this uh, tune and we are able to understand that which instrument is being played even if it is played in the same pitch we are able to um, uh, find that uh, whether it is flute or what kind of instrument it is played or who who, who is speaking if we know somebody and uh, we recognize their voice this is uh, because of uh, this thing and uh, this is the reason why uh, like this three properties are where we <clears throat> uh, we can uh, know that is it is a physical sound and also we get to know whether it is uh, musical or non musical so the next i would tell you about thaat uh, i think this term is absolutely new for you uh, imagine four uh, uh, no 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 just uh, imagine many colored papers with you and uh, you can easily divide it uh, into four categories for example like yellow green blue red so all kinds of yellow as yellows all kinds of greens as greens all kinds of reds as red um, and all kinds of blues to blues so and you create a folder okay and segregate them depending upon their um, uh, the, the color of the paper similarly 
the raga in shastri sangeet that is also further classified so out of thought it is classified uh, the ragas are classified further classified so ragas are not classified on the basis of color as of uh, uh, colored papers but it is on the basis of uh, note or swaras so we have 10 thoughts so first one we have is uh, bilawal thought where all notes are natural shuddh we say shuddh to all the natural notes i'll uh, practically show you comes to raga because there there are many orientations uh, or, uh, ornamentation on the composition so which you can learn by any guru or mentor so you need a proper training for that okay because you have to be uh, connect all the swaras uh, with the another say hi hello to the side notes so uh, the second one is kalyan uh, it consists of uh, tivrama tivrama is uh um, the natural ma uh like the frequency of uh, this tivra ma is higher than the natural ma okay so i say so of being emotional hmm. so uh sorry so, uh, uh this changes the flavor with in, in anxiety and then uh, we have uh, the third thought that is khamaj so khamaj we have komalni which means a frequency lower than the natural okay so you see uh it is the evolution of being emotional upset and complaining okay so a fourth thought that is kafi where we have komalni as as well as komal ga so we are having two komal notes which is making uh, the mood very serious you see now sabri where uh, ga dha and ni are komal so ga dha ni these three notes have a lower frequency than the natural note which expresses the sadness and the pain so here it goes sa ri ga that is um, therap which is a uh, deep down into devotion where we have a re and dha komal frequency is lower than the natural one
then we have seventh and eighth, two thirds Marwa and Purvi, uh, where we have um, Komal Ray and Tivrama. Komal Ray is a frequency lower than it, and uh, uh, and if, uh, in Madhyam, uh, I mean Ma, the frequency is higher. So this this, this creates a mood uh, of a very serious. I'll uh, show you. Well, the application to both the ragas are different. Then we have uh, our ninth note, which is Todi. Re, Ga, Dha, or Komal. Komal means, again, uh, the frequency lower. Than the natural one and Tivrama, which is higher than the natural one. Sorry, uh, there's a mistake. person wanting to move in a path of truth and have uh, a question in mind so this is the mood of uh, Thartodi and then we have Bhairavi where all like Re, Ga, Dha, Ni, all these notes are Komal so this combination uh, of notes portraits surrendering and uh, liberation Coming to the uh, second aspect of um, music, like I, I explained you the first one, now I'll be explaining you the second one. Tal and Laya in Bharatiya Shastri Sangeet. Have you ever wondered of what music makes you feel like dancing? No? Uh, the rhythm and melody are two sides of the same coin in Bharatiya Shastri Sangeet. Whenever uh, we are like whenever we see people snapping, clapping, dancing or uh, playing fingers so they're doing nothing but they're tracing the percussion instrument or uh, the rhythmic aspect of music I'd like to tell you about um, some rhythmic aspects or the concept of uh, Bharti Shastri Sangeet that Tal and Laya are related to rhythm Tal is nothing but a cycle of beats uh, which is made up of uh, specific symbols in specific beats the, the, the difference between each beat is equal and uh, so is the distance between each beat the lesser is the beat the faster is the tempo and vice versa so we have um, three uh, layas in Bharti Shastri Sangeet first is Vilambit second is uh, Madhya third is Trut so first Vilambit is very slow then we have uh, Madhya Lai which is uh, of a medium pace and then we have uh, Drut Lai which means faster so I will show you a little like I'll start with one Vilambit one uh, circle I'll show you
depending upon the knowledge that you have and the experience that you have practically and then uh, I'll tell you a middle layer or madhya layer Formed by the 
combination rag is sorry um so a rag is formed by the combination of a set of notes uh, while singing any rag uh, we can't go beyond and uh, by breaking up the rules which is not actually acceptable uh, we have to, uh, we can't omit uh, um any um, notes or uh, and we 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 are supposed to follow the rules uh, just you know to keep the identity of a particular rag Uh, the identity of the mood of the nature of the raga so it is nothing it is just a melody uh, through which we express different kinds of moods so this is what we call raga so now um if um somebody is singing ragyaman like i just um was singing ragyaman now so if we sing uh, like me sa sa re ga ma ba da ni sa sa ni ga pa ma ga ni sa so this is not actually a mun it's just the notes which are used in ragyaman but when it comes to performance our guru our mentor or you can say teacher um it will guide us uh, that how the phrases has to be produced and uh, also like uh, when it comes to performance you can't sing sa re ga sa re ga ma no it's not like that it is it starts from mi mi re ga ma this way and also uh, uh, like going up sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa it's not like that it is mi re ga ta ni sa we don't use pa while going up we are just using it when we are coming down so um so uh, this is the way uh, how we identify uh, rag yaman a rag is not complete without ornamentation all the notes are sung uh, are not uh, you can't uh, sing it plainly you need uh, to be connecting all the notes uh, you have to join the notes um, also these are the shadow notes which are touched and are not pronounced little bit of high hellos to the side uh, side notes um, and also i would like to tell you that these micro notes or the minute detailing of the notes give uh, a, a kind of interest and a structure to the rag or we can say uh, it gives a feel or an emotion a particular rag whatever we are p- performing so i am done with the session um tabla this is very interesting that this is electronic tabla uh, which uh, we have here with the buttons and also we have few um tal here these are the buttons this is this is uh, the pitch tuna and then we have tempo here we have uh, the volume so i'll play one tal for you <laughs> there's now coming so it is uh, just for practice it is not used in any performance of indian classical music we have an accompanist with us um either tabla or uh, ghatam in uh, carnatic music and um, we have pakhavaj in uh, a different uh, type of gaiki which is called dhrupad in uh, bhartiya shastri sangeet there is a lot of category even uh, under hindustani classical music so pakhavaj is used in uh, dhrupad style of singing and um, here we have a tanpura electronic tanpura like this is the electronic one and uh, this is the actual one which we have to tune daily and uh, which we have to play it is played this way there's a laya there's a, there's a, there's a lay when we play this manual tanpura 
actually the difference is it has a great resonance and electronic tampro just have the volume and uh, as you can see we have harmonium here so I hope all of you enjoyed this workshop and uh, you all are um, I guess uh, cured with all your uh, doubts and uh, hopefully this um, workshop was useful about Indian classical music and uh, I hope to see you all again in the coming sessions in future for with some more detailed informations and discussions till then um, take care see you stay home and stay safe love from India Shweta Patel.